Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Happy New Year. I need uh, some whistles, little uh, hats, I don't know, something. <laughs> but I don't have it. So Happy New Year, everyone. It's so nice to see you. And we are kicking off 20, can't believe we're saying 2024. Oh my gosh. But we're doing it with Brother in a big way with, again, hosting all of our At Your Side virtually shows for you to teach you how to use your machine, inspire you with gifts, crafts, all those fun things. And Brother's given us a whole load of stuff in 2023 to start using in 2024. <laughs> all right. So if you missed any of the shows last week, did Santa leave you anything good under the tree? Like, I don't know, a fabulous printer? <laughs> print moda, uh, an embroidery machine. I mean, the list is long, but leave a comment, let us know. In the meantime, speaking of getting inspired, Jennifer's here and she's got some really fun, I should say projects, because it's kind of one project that can be done many ways. One project, many ways. I think that's what we'll call it. Jennifer, how are you? Welcome brother educator, Jennifer Gleick. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to see you. It's nice to see you, happy new year. Happy New Year! And your project, I think, is going to be a perfect kickoff because I need something to put my tea on. <laughs> yes, I think so too. Um, I, uh, you know, I've got mine here as well. Mine's coffee, uh, but I always have to have something to put my my coffee on. And being at the beginning of the year, we've all got new toys to play with. We're going to be spending a lot of time in our craft room so i'm gonna have a lot of coffee brewing so i thought what a better way is to show you how to make some cute little mug rugs um using art spira um i am i have been playing with the art spira app a lot and you can use it with your embroidery machine your wireless embroidery machine but i'm wondering if any of you got a, a brand new sublimation printer for christmas um the sublimation printer is awesome. And so I'm gonna uh, show you how you can use Art Sparrow with the sublimation printer um, to either print your coaster or stitch your coaster. And I'm sorry, oh my, my camera work is not that great, but we're gonna do it two different ways. Um, just to give you a little inspiration on using that app and using your embroidery machine, um, using those decorative stitches that you've got in your embroidery or your sewing machine and then also using that fun new printer that Santa might have brought you for Christmas. So. I, I know that there's been so many brother fans in the comments over the last month or so that are loving that. Well, I know it was on their list from Santa. So I'm thinking if Santa didn't bring it, they might have bought it themselves. So this is going to be great, a great way to kick off the year. Yeah. And it's, it's just, I mean, there's so much in the app. There's no way I could go over everything with you today. Um, but I thought just a couple little snippets of what the app can do and how it works, you know, how everything all the brother has talks to each other is kind of fun to see. It's super fun. Well, I'll let you take it away. And if I, so we are live in the chat today. So leave your comments and questions. We won't be bringing them up on screen, but you know, we read them and watch for us chatting with you. In the meantime, right. if I think of anything great, I'll bug you. All right. That sounds great. So I'm going to go um, my first, um, my first step is to go take you to the Art Sparrow app so I can show you how I uh, brought these in. These are actually, um, it's artwork that I, okay, I'm not an artist. I'll say it, I, I don't, I, my sister got the art bug. She can draw and paint and uh, do all that kind of stuff. I used to make those little porcelain ornaments with my grandmother growing up and they were hideous because I can't draw or paint. <laughs> Um, so I, I go for the fabric. I can do a lot with fabric. So uh, my art skills are not that great. I actually in, imported this little coffee mug from Canvas. Oh, my. So you can bring your own artwork, whether you want to draw your artwork. Uh, if you have a membership to some website where you purchase clip art, you can bring that into Artspira. Um, you can have your grandchildren or children draw artwork. You can bring that into Art Spira. And that's what I used for this because, well, I don't think I could draw a coffee cup if I had to do it to save my life. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to go over to Art Spira. 
All right, Jennifer, while you get that up on the screen, uh, I think your phone might have fallen asleep. I'm going to have to laugh because I think a lot of people that know you and watch how creative you are know that uh, maybe you can't draw, but you sure can sew <laughs> and design and do all of the other things in there. So, all right, now let's bring this app up here. All right, so I can see your phone screen. Great. I hope you all don't mind. We're just going to hang out here and chat while she's doing this because I can't make that any bigger. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jennifer. You know, technology is what it is, but hopefully you can see this. Expand it on your phone, on your uh, computer screen or your TV screen, however you're watching us. So I am in the Artsphere app, and if anybody uh, has played with it, you have lots of options within the app. You have embroidery designs, cutting designs, printing designs. There's a new tab for sublimation. Um, you got projects, uh, design templates. There's the Artspira magazine. So there's all these built-in things you can use. But like I said, you can bring in your own artwork. So I am going to show you first um, how to do uh, printing of an artwork uh, with the new sublimation printer. So down at the bottom of my screen, now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everyone I am an Android user. So if you are an Apple user, your uh, layout might be a little different, but is that you're still gonna have all of the same functions. So down at the bottom of my screen, there's a little plus button that says new. And I'm going to touch that. And default, it brings me into embroidery. And like I said, we're going to go printing first. So I am going to go over on the top and I'm going to touch printing. And I'm going to go to design editor. Now the app wants me to tell it what size I want to use uh, for paper. Um, if you look at the bottom, there's a fabric roll because we, we can also use print moto, which prints is on fabric. But I'm going to do the sublimation printer today. So up on top, I am going to actually choose letter landscape because I want to put um, two images on so I can print two coasters at the same time. So I'm going to select letter landscape and touch done. And that brings me to my artboard or creation screen. Down at the bottom, I have options. Uh, I can actually choose a background. Um, I can choose just a color. I can choose a pattern from within Artspira. These are the fabric patterns. I can choose an image from my phone or any patterns that I've um, created. I can add text with the little T. But for now, I'm going to bring in that coffee cup that I created. And I created that in Canvas Workspace. The way I did it is I um, brought it up in Canvas Workspace. It's a built-in Canvas Workspace project. I turned it into color, and I took a screenshot saved it as an image file, and then uh, sent it to myself because I had to get it to my phone. So then I saved it in my phone camera, and that's where it is living now. So I'm going to go to this little plus. When I go to the plus, it lets me choose my camera roll on my phone or my device. Here's all my photos. Up at the top, I'm actually going to find my album that I've called Art Spira. Oh, that's a good idea to find oh, out. I'm scrolling forever looking for something, right? So whenever I bring something to use with Art Spira onto my phone, I move it to my Art Spira album. And then, then I know where, where it's going to be living. So here are the things that I've been playing with. And up at the top here is, you see my cats there, but there's the little coffee cup it pops it into the screen. If I select it, we've got a blue block, blue box around it. That will allow me to move it down at the bottom. I can size it. Now, the one thing that I wish they would change in Art Spirit is, you know, on our machines, Angela, when you want to size something, you can just touch the icon and it will and hold it down it will size up mm -hmm. with with our app we have to continually hit the little plus button i can't just touch it is that is that like one of our little we've got a little wish list that's a very small yeah, wish list, but that's 
But <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to size this up to uh, 3.25 inches high. Now I'm, I'm doing this because I know what I did before. So 3.25 and it's going to be 3.14 wide and I'm going to hit the check. I'm going to touch anywhere in the white space to deselect it. I can't duplicate that, but I can sure go ahead and add it a second time. So again, I go into my photos. I'm going to find my art Spira. Find that same mug, select it, move it over. Now I could put as many of these as I wanted on the paper, but I'm just going to do two. I am going to go to size again. Bear with me. I'm going to size that up so it's the same size. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> There we go. And so now I've got two of them. I could add words here if I wanted to. Um, but for now, I'm just going to print these. The one I've done and I have it up at the top right, I'm going to hit done. It's going to ask me if I want to save. Um, I'm just going to print these. So I'm going to hit don't save. And now if you've noticed with the sublimation printer, if you are familiar with sublimation, it's different than vinyl. It's an actual ink. So when you put that paper down on your uh, whatever it is you're going to put it on, whether it's fabric or t-shirt, it's still got to be mirror imaged like your heat transfer vinyl. And if you noticed here, the app has already mirror imaged my coffee cups for me because that's the way it prints. So that's a really cool feature. So all wow, I have to that do is you don't have, that's a really cool feature. You don't have to think. Now you can go into the settings and turn that off if you would like. But if you're like me, I would probably most likely forget to mirror image. So I'm just going to leave that setting the way it is. So I've got down here, I've got, it says printer. It's got my uh, sublimation printer already connected. Um, there it is. And all I have to do is hit print. Now, as long as there's no gremlins here, we're on the same Wi-Fi network. I hear my printer working. It tells me it's sent it to the printer. I hear it. I hear, I hear it, it over there. <laughs> yeah, it's over there. <laughs> and we'll go and see that in a minute. It takes a little while to print. So now let's do the same thing, but let's do let's do an embroidery because we can digitize our designs in Art Spira as well. So I'm going to use that same coffee mug and I'm going to go to back up. Oh, sorry about that, Jennifer. I was going to move this, but I forgot you're doing another one. So let me bring this so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, sure. So for sure. those of you that are trying to make it bigger, just either put this on your TV screen or scroll, but I'm putting it right in the center because usually if you're watching it on a smaller screen, it's the easiest to see. So yeah. keep asking yeah. your questions. While, while you're doing this, Jennifer, I would love to know from everybody watching, how many people realized that you can draw, bring stuff in from your camera roll, all of these things and use them this way? It's not just what's built into Art Spira. I think this is a big game changer. It is a big game changer. I mean, think about, I don't know, think about when you're like, say you're on a road trip or something mm -hmm. and we have those ideas. I don't know about you, but in the shower, my showers are always extra long because I think about all the craft projects I want to work on. So <laughs> you're on a road trip and you think, oh, I have this bright idea. Well, you can go right into Art Spira and do your designing. You don't have to be in your craft room and you can save it. And then when you come home, you can stitch it or print it or do whatever. So it's it's all right there on your at your fingertips. So it's Absolutely. really cool. So I had some fun with the same coffee cup and I'm going to go again, I'm going to go down to the bottom to new. And this time, as you can see, the last thing we selected was printing. So I'm going to go over to embroidery and I have some options here. I have a design editor 
we're not going to edit a design yet. We want to make a design. Drawing tools. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that because I can't draw. Um, image to embroidery is what we want to do. So I'm going to bring in that same image and I want to turn it to embroidery stitches. So I'm going to select that. Now, here is a little tip for everybody. Whatever size hoop you pick, when you bring that image in, Artsphere is going to try to fit it in the hoop. So because I want a little coaster that's these are five by five so i just want a little a little um image if i choose a nine and a half by 14 hoop can you imagine how many times i'm going to have to hit that little minus button to size my up down so i'm going to choose the four by four hoop i'm not going to use the four by four hoop to stitch it but you know jennifer i never even thought about that because I usually just pick the largest hoop because that's what I'm going to be using, not realizing that that's what could happen now with your design. That's a really good tip. Yes. So I'm not going to use the four by four when I stitch it, but this way I'm not trying to shrink it way down to what I want. So right. if I choose the four by four hoop and hit done, it's going to automatically take me to the page to choose um, my design or my image that I want to turn into embroidery. So I am going to choose um, my camera roll. And again, I'm going to go to that same little Art Spira folder. Choose my coffee cup. It does tell me that the image size is too big. It's going to fit it to that, to that hoop. And I'm going to hit OK. See how it fits that whole hoop? Oh, so yeah. If I choose the bigger hoop, it's going to fit that bigger hoop. So down at the bottom here are our uh, digitizing tools. So we can digitize just as embroidery stitches. There is a cross stitch feature, which gives you three different options. You can turn it into what looks like cross stitch um, stitches. You choose the number of colors. You can choose to remove the background, which means it will turn the background into stitches. I don't wanna do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just play with the number of colors. I'm going to drop this down to five. I don't have that many colors in my design, but I'm going to hit five and I'm going to hit preview. And it's going to digitize my coffee cup. Wow. I don't know if you can see that. It has done stitches, but I'm looking at it. And if I, I, I can't make it bigger if I hit I hit done. I don't think I can make it bigger. I can see right at the top of the coffee cup, there's like a black stitching, like an outline. It tried to do an outline. So I'm going to go back into conversion. And for some reason, when I go to six colors, it fixes it. So I'm just going to change it to six. <laughs> hey, there you go. And it fixed it. So I'm going to hit done. Now, in this screen, I can change the size, so I'm going to go to size, and same thing. I'm going to. Uh, I remember that I did 3.25, and that'll be important later. So I'm going to go down to 3.25 in the height. My little tapping here. Tap tap. That's tap, such tap. a cute design too. And I'm going to hit preview. And I'm going to hit done. Now, I can't change colors or anything in this screen. This is solely digitizing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to give it a name. Coffee. And it has saved it. I'm going to close. I'm going to go home. Just so you can see where I'm going. Now, if I go down under my creations, it's there on the top. It tells me that's my image to embroidery. The one underneath it was another embroidery that I did. There's a printing one I did. So I'm gonna click on this last one that we did. Now, if I touch it in this design editor, if you see at the bottom, 
I have different options. I can still size it, but look, I can go into color and I can actually change the color of the threads. So if you wanna see what it looks like in different colors. Oh, wow. You can change right here on the screen. So it's I'm a mini artist pad. It, it is, it's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and and of course, we all know when we get it to the embroidery machine, we're probably going to change the colors anyway. But, <laughs> Isn't that so true? But, you know, so you can see what it's going to look like. You get it to where you like it. And you hit done. I am not going to save it again. I'm just going to hit don't save. Now it brings me to the transfer screen. As you can see at the bottom, I already have my luminaire selected. If you don't, there'll be a little um, arrow and you would click on it and it will bring your machines up. You select which one you wanna transfer it to. And then I'm just gonna hit transfer. And this is kind of like my connection. If you're familiar with um, the scan and cut and my connection, it's just telling me that it only can only send one thing over the cloud at a time. So I'm going to say, okay. It's going to send to my machine and I'm going to hit okay. So now I've sent my design over to uh, my luminaire. Wow. That simple. That simple. That simple. Yes. So Very anyway, if you have questions on this, leave them in the chat. And we will be in the chat. If we can't answer them right away, we will get answers for you. But that that was a great tutorial, Jennifer, just to be able to follow step by step. And for those of you that are watching, maybe you jumped in late <laughs> because it's uh, the new year. Uh, what you can do is go to Brother So's YouTube channel, look under the live shows, and you can go back and play this and stop. So you can follow along, hit play, pause, play, pause. That's how I usually do it, at least. Okay, so I'm going to switch cameras. I'm going to go over to my luminaire. All right. And I'm going to show you how I put uh, the background fill around there. And then I will show you how to put the coaster together. Awesome. All right. So she's headed over to the luminaire. And be sure to leave a comment if you got anything from Santa that has the word brother on it, because we would love to know. So while she is switching over to her camera, um, I love this project. And I actually ordered a new stylus. Well, I actually paid for it. Santa forgot to bring it to me. So I could sit there and sketch like she's talking about when you're going somewhere. Can you sit there and draw stuff and save? Yes, you can. All right, Jennifer's at her machine. Let me bring you up. We can see you great, Jennifer. All right, perfect. And you can hear me okay? We can hear you. Fabulous. All right, All right. so let's do this. Let's go to embroidery. And I'm going to go and find that design that I just sent over from Artspira. So I'm going to go down to my machine pocket, which is where uh, things are saved. And because we've sent it over with the cloud, I am going to choose my little pocket cloud here. There is my coffee cup. And it's not liking my stylus this morning or this afternoon. I'm going to hit set. Now, if you notice on the top, it did kind of shrink my design a little bit. Technology is never perfect. Um, so I'm just going to go into edit and size. And I'm actually going to hit the uh, proportion key mm -hmm. so that I make sure to recalculate stitches while I size. And I'm going to make that 3.25 or as close to 3.25 as I can. And 3.14 wide. That's pretty darn close. And I'm going to hit OK. So now I want to put a background fill around it. So I'm going to go to my stamps button, which is the little flower. And as you can see on the screen, uh, the machine tries to put 
an outline around each little part of the design. I just want a outline around the whole design perimeter. So I'm going to increase the distance until I see it's just around the outline. It will expand around the steam of the cup. So now you can see I'm just around the outside. And I'm going to touch memory. The machine's going to take that stamp outline and put it over in my design center for me. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to add my design center. I'm going to go to that stamps button and go to my flower. That's where I'm going to find the stamp I just made and touch it. Touch OK. Now I'm going to put a box around that so that I can drop in a background fill. So I'm going to go to back to stamps, choose my box, touch OK, and I'm going to go to size. And we now we know we have the 10 key here, which makes it so much easier to set the size. So I'm going to set this to 5.5. .5. 5.5 and touch OK. And I am going to go to my line properties. I don't want a satin stitch around the outside of that box. I'm going to turn off the stitching, touch my paint bucket, and touch this outside line. And then I'm going to go to my fill properties. And for this, I'm going to choose one of our built in background fills. So I'm going to touch the motif uh, category and hit select. And I'm going to choose, I really like this one because I think it looks like theme. You could use this one too. You could do something a little different. And touch OK. Again, choose our paint bucket and touch the area between the box and our stamped image. Touch next. And now I'm going to make a couple more changes. I'm going to turn on the outline here so that I get an outline around my embroidery. So I'm going to turn that on. And then I'm going to make this just light stitching instead of the uh, thick quilting. And I'm going to size it up just a little bit. Now, I am going to go ahead and save this in memory because I want to be able to drop that same background I created into the printed uh, coaster. Once I get that print on my fabric, I can now drop that over the top because it's the same size as our image. So now I'm going to hit set. It's going to convert it to embroidery. And there's our coffee cup. And there's one more thing that I want to do is I do not want it to stitch the little heart or inside of the uh, handle. There is some white stitching. So I'm going to go to edit. And I'm going to go to the no sew feature. Oh, I think I have to hit. I have to select the design. I have to select the coffee cup and then go to no sew. And I'm going to choose the white. You can see he, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see those two little spots. And I'm going to turn that off. And that way I don't have to worry about accidentally stitching it or having to skip over it. So now I have my coaster ready to stitch. I will stitch it out. And then I'm ready to put it all together. So I'm going to now change over to my overhead camera so I can show you uh, with the magic of cameras. That was so easy, Jennifer. That was so easy. So be sure to leave your comments below, but I can guarantee you watching this that you're going to want to go back and put this on, maybe put it on your phone and hit pause, play, pause, play to design this entire thing. Super, super easy. Now she's doing this on the Luminaire, but if you have my design center, then you should be able to do most of this at least. <laughs> All right. 
So I'm at the overhead. This is my print from my um, sublimation printer. You can see it prints very light, but don't worry when you print something on the sublimation printer. Once you apply heat and pressure, that uh, ink turns into a gas and permeates your fabric and becomes darker. So with the magic of camera, I have one that's all uh, pressed on my fabric. So that's ready for a coaster. And then of course, because we only have so much time on camera, I have this stitched out. So here is- Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Ah, oh, that is so rich. Yes. So I put the the dropped in the background. I mean, look at the look at the stitching. Look at how nice the digitized stitching is from Art Spira. I mean, I just let the app do it. Wow. So now to make this into a coaster, I'm going to take my fabric here and I'm just going to trim it down to five by five. And these are really fun. Could you imagine doing like a, a little set of four for a gift or, you know, maybe a uh, housewarming gift? I'm even thinking with this, this would be a cute thing if you're just having like a little dinner party a or another couple over or just a couple people to have one uh, to get that they could take with them. Right. And and I chose coffee just because I'm a coffeeaholic, but I mean... <laughs> You could take any artwork. You could do any kind of theme that you'd like. So I've cut my, um, this does have a little piece of, I used a piece of uh, just a scrap of batting. So it is a little bit puffy. And then what I found. Of, wait, Jennifer, when you uh, hoop that, what kind of stabilizer did you use? You know, I used a no-show mesh. Okay, no-show uh, mesh. It's a lightweight no-show mesh, and the reason I like it is because it is a cutaway, but it's so light, I don't have to worry about taking it out of my project. Oh, nice. Well, that's a great tip. Okay. I know that will be a next question coming up. So you put yes. the no-show cutaway, then you put the batting, and then your fabric. Yes. So I found this cute coffee fabric. Oh, my gosh. You are a coffee holic. Look at how cute that is. Um, I am. So we've cut this at five by five by five. Now you can make your coasters or mug rugs, whatever size you want. Um, but I'm going to show a little quick way to bind this. I cut a piece of my fabric. This is my backing fabric and I've cut it two inches bigger all around. So it's seven by seven. And I'm going to take my ruler and I've got a this is a um, heat erase marker uh, for this you could use any pen I wouldn't I wouldn't use a like a I don't know like a marker marker that might bleed through but you're not going to see this this is just for you um, for a guide So I do one inch all the way around. And then I do another, I come in and I do a half of an inch. And this isn't my technique. This is a technique I've seen done several places and it works for me. So um, I'm not taking credit for it. One of those, once you find something that works, you just use it. So now I've got my square and I'm gonna take a little bit of just um, off screen here. I'm gonna take a little bit of the, I don't know, the little spray adhesive that's not permanent. 
onto the back of my coaster and center this here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna wrap my binding around. So to do that, another tip, I'm full of tips today. <laughs> I love double-sided tape. One of my favorite things to make are bags. So I have all kinds of double-sided tape. This is fantastic for holding your binding in place. Or you can get even craftier and you can buy these little glue, roller glue things that you can get in like the scrapbooking section. It's double-sided tape. And it's great for, I'm just going to put a little piece here and fold my corners in. And that one's not quite started yet. It's brand new. And it will hold these in place for me. I use this when I do um, paper piecing as well. This one is just not sticking. So I'm going to go for my double sided tape. Oh, that's a great idea. Boy, you are full of tips today, Jennifer. It's the new year, right? Everybody wants new tips to help them be productive because we're all starting. Um, we're all starting those UFO lists, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to laugh so loud and interrupt your show, but my UFOs. Well, maybe that will be my thing for 2024. Either throw them out or finish them. What are the other? Or maybe give them I'll away. Make, I'll make the list with such good intentions. So <laughs> you had some tips. So now what I'm going to do is I would wind up folding this over. Actually, you got to fold your one of the corners in. And this is tricky to do when I'm trying to talk at the same time. I know you need I I'd hand you my hand my hands to hold the edges, but I don't think it'll work. Yeah. So you're going to fold it over. And I do have my sewing clips here. Now, I will say this is one of those things you can't be too picky. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we all want perfect. And so that line that I drew helps me just with the guide of where to fold. See this one, I have to move a little bit. It's a coaster. You could bind this the standard, um, you know, way you do quilt bindings, but for such a little project that seems a little bit excessive. All right, so we've got our binding folded. And so my last step would be to, uh, I could just do a straight stitch all the way around here, or I could just a decorative stitch and go all the way around, um, whatever you feel like. So I'm gonna go over to the luminaire and- Oh my gonna, gosh, that is super, super, super cute. I, I do love want the tip. how to drop in that background over the sublimation design. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to stitch this. So I'm okay, going to go. Perfect. 
so she's switching to over to the luminaire and i will bring you up here be sure to ask your questions as you know what's happening here this is a super cute project i'm i love mug rugs i love mug rugs so oh let's see are you back jennifer i'm just gonna hit the button okay i thought i saw i wasn't sure if i was supposed to go back in or not here we go all right so I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and save this just because all that work, let's save it. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to go to embroidery. Here's the one we saved that was just the outline. So that's what I'm going to bring up and I'm going to hit set. Now I'm going to hit embroidery. So I'm ready to stitch, but I want to stitch that over uh, the sublimation that we did. So I am going to put, first I'm going to put the hoop on, and then I'm going to do, um, Angela, I'm going to switch over to my other camera so you can see the bed of the machine. Okay, perfect. And as she's switching, mug rugs are my absolute favorite. So I'm just still laughing about her UFO projects because I, I think it would be a good idea. Maybe we should give those away this year. Go to your UFO projects. If you're not going to do it, give it away. Let somebody else do it. <laughs> I have girlfriends that do that, actually. I think that sounds like a great idea. So I'm going to bring in, now I'm just going to float my sublimation one here. Um, you could, if you're using a, different hoop or you know however you want to do it but just I'm not going to stitch it I just wanted to show you how we can do this so I'm going to put the sublimation fabric underneath I've got the no show mesh mesh hoops I've got a scrap piece of just some batting that I had from a project and then I'm going to put the fabric here on top and then on our luminaire, you know, we have a camera, but we have that fun projector. So if I hit the projector, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to see it here. Oh, we can see it. By the way, the rainbow oh. does not come with the projector, but the rainbow yes. always shows up on the live shows. <laughs> right, so now I've got, um, my fabric and i can actually either because i'm floating this i can move the fabric into position or i can move on the screen you know i can move my design down or up so that's how i would position that around my uh, printed design and then i would go ahead and stitch it I think that's pretty simple. What do you think, Angela? Very simple. You know, that projector is an absolute game changer when it comes to placement. And just as you showed there, you can either move your fabric if you're floating it or change it on the screen if you have it hooped. Super and easy if to I, build. If I do float it, what I, what I did on the one that I stitched before was I did float it. And then once I had it in position, I did a basting stitch. You know, I added the basting stitch around it and did that before I actually did the stitching. Oh, that's a good idea. So it doesn't move around. It doesn't move around. All right, so I'm going to change. We're going to go to sewing mode. All right. And I'm going to just change my foot. Sewing mode it is while she's changing her foot around, which by the way, uh, is super easy if you want to take a quick peek at that. <laughs> but it is, she's going to the sewing mode now. And not live on camera. <laughs> I know. I'll take you off. No pressure. No pressure. No, it's okay. That's <laughs> uh, so Jennifer, the hardest thing during the live shows is making sure you can still find your brother's screwdriver, which makes it really easy to do that. Because usually in live shows, it disappears somewhere. It disappears. <laughs> yes. I agree. So I'm going oh to my just God. so much fun. So if you have questions again, uh, I can tell you right now that you're going to want to save this episode. If you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to Brother Sews. Make that your New Year's resolution. Don't miss a live show. And then also, you can go back and watch it anytime. So when you go back to Brother's YouTube, scroll across 
That's not coming out of my office. Sorry about the sound like I'm in New York. <laughs> I was Times Square. <laughs> Times Square. It's just a New Year's thing for everyone. Scroll across the top to the live shows. You can go back and binge watch these. Actually, hopefully you did that all weekend, um, over the weekend. But anyways, this one you're going to want to stop, pause, stop, pause. You can play along on your own machine. So she's just about ready, switching it to the sewing side. What did you think of the way that she used that little trick in the corner? I love that for the binding. That's really easy. Uh, so, let me see almost if I back. Can... Not quite. Almost, almost. Don't get seasick, right. everyone. There you okay. go. We can see you great. Sounds good. All right. So I've got my my little mug here or mug rug. And so what I like to do with this is I go into uh, actually, I go into the quilting stitches and do you want to take us over there, Jennifer, to the quilting yeah, stitches or could you? Yeah, of course. Oh, so perfect. Go into Q. Oh. There and I like, there's lots of different quilting stitches here that are fun. There's the little binding stitch, which is really cool because if you're doing this for a binding stitch, uh, you can actually go and I don't know if people know this you can um, mirror image that stitch. So whatever whatever direction you put your binding in your machine, you can set your stitch. So I think for this um, coaster, I am going to use, uh, let's go with this one here, which is kind of a fun stitch. And to keep me on track, we all love our so straight laser vision guide. So if I turn that laser on, I can set that laser to where I want it. So I'm gonna set it kind of at center needle position. So my laser is gonna project down on my coaster and it will allow me to set that stitch right on the edge of my binding so that it'll hold my binding down. So I'm gonna switch over to my other camera. And I'm going to go so great, ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put my mug rug underneath my foot here. I am using the um, this is the N plus foot. It's got the uh, coating on the bottom. So no matter what you're stitching on, it's not going to stick. And of course, I didn't plug in a um, foot pedal, so I'm going to drive with my on off button. So wish me luck. So I'm just going to go down. I don't know if you can see the laser, but my laser is projecting right on the edge of my binding here. I still love how quiet my luminaire is. Yeah, you can't even hear it. Stop it right on the corner. Go find my top stick. So that I can make sure that I get everything underneath the needle and I use my fingers. And this is really a fun way to use some of those decorative stitches. I think there's like what over 700 and something decorative stitches on your machine. <laughs> so yeah. that means you need to make 700 That's of these. I want to see them all. <laughs> oh gosh, I love it. I'm sure there's some of you out there that use your decorative stitches a lot. I would definitely say yes. I 
I mean, you could be ambitious enough and create your own decorative stitch for this. I don't know. Again, <laughs> not an artist. I beg to differ. This is beautiful. I like the chopstick, Jennifer. Yeah, I, I have a fancy stiletto or stylus or whatever you call it somewhere. But, you know, the chopstick is nice and long. <laughs> really keeps my fingers out of the way. I'll cut my thread. And there we go. I'll come back on the big screen here. Wow, that is so cute clip my threads here okay so two ways to do this one with printing both with embroidery one with printing i'm gonna bring you up hold on there you go look there's at that one. and there's the embroidered one wow they both look amazing and you know what they both look so different i love how you added the fill on the outside that really brought it together and yeah. so the printing as you mentioned it when it first prints off before you heat it it's a little bit lighter in color yeah. and then after you print it it's a little darker correct so it, it prints um and when it prints it is very light the first time i printed something i thought uh oh there must be something <laughs> wrong with the printer but it it's it's really light and i know my light in my room is I mean, you can't even tell what color. Wow, was. look, it is really light. But then you you heat set it and it really changes. So when you print, when you do that first print on your sublimation printer, don't think that something's wrong. It's supposed to be that way. <laughs> That's been the conversation ever since the printer came out. I remember the first thing when Emily printed her first thing and everybody was in the comments, don't worry after you press it, it's going to be a lot darker. Yeah. And that's good to know because you, you want to know that don't look at what's coming out yet. Not until you press it. Yes. Not until you press it. Yes. So very fun project. Anybody have any questions? Leave them in the comments below. Okay. The Art Spira. Oh, look at that this, one. This one I added some words and you could add the words on your embroidery machine or like i showed you in art spira you can add the words right in art spira in your um on your embroidery stitch design um and it will be part of your design so this one i had some fun coffee beans so uh, no. <laughs> we're gonna have a little side bets next time jennifer's on can you guess what the fabric's gonna look like <laughs> right <laughs> That's awesome. What an amazing project. What an amazing project. So if you see below, uh, it says brothersews.com. You could also go to brother-usa.com. Scroll to the bottom. They have two blogs, a sewing and a crafting. You don't want to miss that. And now all of the new designs have come out on Art Spira for the month of January. So you want to pop in there as well. Be sure to leave a comment. Use hashtag brothersews. Jennifer, this was an awesome project. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's been fun. I hope that I hope that everyone shows off their mug rugs. Uh, yes, and definitely, and use hashtag Brother Sews. And by the way, I know a lot of you like to put in your calendar when the brother shows on and who's coming on because we've got educators, we have ambassadors. I added something new to AngelaWolf.com. If you click on classes and events, go to live schedule, and I have a list as far as I know of who's coming on. So if you have a favorite, of course, they're all your favorite, by the way. But if you have a favorite, you want to make sure to see you don't want to miss something quilting or embroidery, you can scan that list, add it to your calendar, never miss a show, right, Jennifer? Right, that sounds great. I'll have to all go right, look at my calendar. Yeah, it's like a great way. It's actually it's my calendar to keep me on track. <laughs> <laughs> we all need those. Yes, and now we're going to need to add a UFO section. Jennifer, I'm going to, if you get a box of things in the mail, don't be offended. I'll make sure I look for the coffee stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Until next time, everyone. Happy sewing, happy crafting. Jennifer, happy new year. Happy new 